Hey, it's me, Tommy. I'm currently recording this on my computer through the A10 Mini Pro, just uh, with QuickTime, because I wanted to demonstrate that I'm using the A10 Mini Pro to control this particular shot. Uh, and I have this one button here called Play Clip that will let me select any video in my finder, hit Play Clip, it'll change that clip to camera two on the A10 Mini Pro, play it over the stream, and then switch back to this view as soon as the clip is finished, like so. I can talk over the clip while it's playing, and then it'll switch back as soon as the clip is over, just like that. And as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how I'm getting my comments up on the screen like this, with a free extension from Aaron Parecki. I've also added another button called Size Live Chat, which helps me get this set up really quickly. We're gonna go over all that today. Now I'm gonna explain how it works, why it works, what it does, and what I used to make this happen. So if you're extremely curious, you can you know create your own custom buttons on the Stream Deck. My reason for building this play clip button was I didn't want to have to buy the Hyper Deck uh, from Blackmagic because it's hundreds of dollars and it didn't do what I needed it to do. I wanted a tool that would let me just pick a video in Finder and then play it over a stream. But everything that I've seen has been overly complicated uh, to do it. So instead I kind of wrote my own. Now this is not a super simple process. This is uh, an advanced tutorial. I'm going to assume that you already have a Stream Deck, the A10 Mini Pro, OBS, and BitFocus Companion. And if you don't know how to get those all working together, there's an excellent video that you can go check in the description of this one to get to the point where you're comfortable using those things. Or at least you have them all installed and connected. And I had to write a bunch of code, shell script and Apple script to get this to work. So this will only work for a Mac. It will not work for a PC. I created a config file where all of the config related options are to kind of help isolate anything that would be changing between my computer and yours. But because of how long this took me to create, simply based on the amount of support that I expect people are going to require to get this all set up for very for different various environments or very specific questions people are going to have um, I'm selling this for fifteen dollars so if you want to if you want to get this set up the way that I have it set up you can buy it in the at the link in the description of this video and I'll support you there if you have any issues with it so in order to get this working the way that I want it to work I would need to use Apple script and that's what lets you interface with things on your Mac, like Finder, to determine what file you actually have highlighted in the Finder. Uh, you can't do that with Shell Script. You can do that with Apple Script, but you can't run Apple Script directly from BitFocus Companion. However, you can run a Shell Script from BitFocus Companion, like this one. There's run, there's internal run shell path local, so you can run a Shell Script. And then using that shell script, you can then launch an Apple script. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, this is the new clip shell script that I'm running, which is included in that package for $15, as well as all the other config files and stuff that you'll need. But essentially this first line gets the path of wherever this whole extension is, wherever this package that you downloaded and installed exists. And then it executes this Apple script that I wrote and compiled called selected path, which will return whatever selected path you have in your topmost finder window. Like for instance, this video file, right? I had this red sunset video file selected, it would return the path to that video file. Then it creates a sim link now, the thing about OBS is it doesn't work with symlinks. A symlink is a symbolic link or just, uh, it's like a, a pointer. It's basically a link to another file, right? Now, with OBS, I created a scene that is, it points to this one video file, which is included in here. It's test.move, right? It's just this little video file. That's where the scene in OBS is pointing to, but, when I run my script, it replaces that video file with a symbolic link to your new highlighted video file. And that OBS doesn't get triggered by that because in the scene in OBS, one of the options you have is to unload a file after it's not after it's no longer in use. So when setting up the scene, 
you uncheck that option. Properties, right? Right here, there's this close file when inactive. If you have that checked, then it will close the file after you turn that scene off. And then you can switch out the symbolic link and then it'll be a new file. And so that's sort of the back end of how this play clip button works. It hacks OBS to utilize a symbolic link, even though if you have just a symbolic link there and then you set the scene up, the file that you have selected in OBS will just point to where, whatever the destination file is instead of the symbolic link. So using that kind of workaround, it works. So let's talk through what this size live chat button is doing, right? So you can use Aaron Parecki's comment extension for free. In fact, he's done it for a long time, but whenever I use it, it takes me five to 10 minutes to get sized up and perfectly set up every time. And this button does it for me in one second. The first thing you need to do is just open up the pop out chat from YouTube, which is really easy. There's a couple dots on the screen. You just click on it, pop out chat from there. You tap the button It takes the URL from the pop out chat, opens a new Chrome window and closes the old one and then pastes in the URL and then navigates to that URL. Right after OBS is closed, it then takes the URL and then updates the configuration of OBS's selected comment window to the new URL because every time I do a live stream, the URL changes. And for OBS to know what a window in Chrome to display, it has to have the proper URL. So it updates OBS's config and then reopens OBS because otherwise it wouldn't work. And then it activates Aaron Parecki's comment extension and resizes the window to fit perfectly. And, and oh, and it also reloads the page automatically too because that's one of the steps for Aaron Parecki's comment extension. So it does all those steps right away. And uh, it took me a while to figure out how to get it all done, but now it's done and it's a button and it's included in this package. Now you can configure this Apple script. Uh, if you download this, it's this uh, resize comments thing. You just open it with script editor. And then if you wanted to resize or change the dimensions of the window, you would just change this piece right here. Set bounds of a window to the top one is the top left point X1, Y1, and the second two coordinates are X2 and Y2. So you're creating a box, right? X1, Y1, X2, Y2, right? So you just, you can play with that. This should work for most people, um, but if you need to change it, that's what you can do. There's also this extremely detailed readme of how to install all this stuff. Uh, it's, again, like I said, it's really, it's kind of complicated, uh, but I was very thorough in my instructions and all you need to change is this config.sh file. All you have to do is open it up with your favorite text editor and then change your user path, mine's users slash Tommy on my Mac, or wherever I, you know, the user path that I use for this, you'd have to change this to your user path. And then everything else is kind of optional. It should just work. That's, that's how I got this working. Hopefully it works for you. Uh, it's optimized my live stream setup to where I can actually work with whatever video file I have on my computer. If I want to share a video over my stream in real time, I can just pick it. Uh, if I'm running a workshop, I can have someone email me a video file in the workshop and then immediately pull that up on my stream. I know there's other ways to get video files on your streams, uh, but I never wanted to have to set up a scene in OBS with specific clips before my stream. I just want to pick a video file and then play it. Uh, and also the comment thing, it would take me five or 10 minutes to set up those comments every single time. So I made a button to do it in one second and uh, that's it. So if you like these hacks, uh, you know, feel free to hit the subscribe button. If you buy it and you need support, you know, shoot me an email. Happy to help. All right. Thanks guys. Peace out.